Nothing adds strength and beauty to a project like a hand-cut dovetail. A dovetail box on its own can stand as a testament to the skill of the craftsman because the skills involved are the foundation of the best of American design. Yet at first glance, it can be difficult to imagine exactly how that joint goes together. I'm Andrew Texera. I'm an American artisan, and in my career as a professional cabinet maker, I've worked alongside some of the best craftspeople today. They trained me from an apprentice, and I brought my experience here to the classroom at Woodcraft. We've been doing some projects that entertain both novice and accomplished woodworkers alike, because we build the project around essential skills like how to cut a dovetail by hand. I like to show you some of the things we've been doing here at Woodcraft so you can imagine exactly how we can help your skills grow. Success in dovetailing has a lot to do with having everything set up before, before you get ready to work. So let's review the tools that you'll need to cut your dovetail successfully. One of the most important tools is a dovetail saw. There's a variety of different saws. This is my favorite. This is the Veritas dovetail back saw. The characteristics we need to have in our dovetailing saw is a shorter blade and a rigid spine. It comes in a variety of teeth per inch. It'll be abbreviated on the saw as TPI. I prefer the 20 TPI. I feel it gives a more controlled cut through a variety of woods. It's also available in 14 TPI. I would only choose that, that dovetail saw if I were cutting through very hard woods like oak or making very long cuts. Another type of dovetailing saw is a gent saw. It has very similar characteristics to our, to our other saw. It has a short blade and a rigid spine, but it has a flat handle. It produces very similar results, but it requires a different stance when we're using it, and we'll go over that during the video. And to honor a whole nother dovetailing tradition, there is, of course, a Japanese dovetailing saw. You'll see it does have some of the same characteristics where it has a shorter blade and the rigid spine. It also has a very long handle, which requires a different posture when you're using the saw, and again, we'll review that. In addition to the saw, we'll also need some sharp chisels. I find it best to use a one inch or 26 millimeter bench chisel, as well as a 10 millimeter or 3 8 inch bench chisel. There are less expensive alternatives around. You can find these same chisels in less expensive brands, but what's really important is that the chisel be sharp. The difference between this uh, file uh, bench chisel and this earwind bench chisel is the quality of the steel. You can get this chisel just as sharp as this chisel, it just won't hold the edge as long. I often joke with people, if you want to get really good at sharpening, this is a chisel to get because you're going to have to keep sharpening it. If you want your chisel to hold its edge, file is the way to go. In addition to our chisels, we will also need a jeweler saw and another alternative for that is a plain coping saw. Now what's the difference between these two saws? I prefer the jeweler's saw as opposed to the coping saw because I can fit a wider variety of blades in it. Essentially, any saw blade that would fit in a scroll saw without the pins will fit in your jeweler's saw. And let's just select uh, some very fine blades that'll fit in between the kerf made by our dovetailing saw. And again, that will show that in the, in the video that follows. Another tool that we'll need for driving those chisels is a wooden mallet. This is one that we make in the classroom here at Woodcraft. Any type of wooden mallet will do. We'll also need a dead blow mallet. Now this mallet is coated in rubber, but if you listen closely and you shake it, it sounds like a maraca. What's inside there is some grape shot. And what that does is when you tap down with the mallet, it doesn't bounce back. It's, we'll be using them as we assemble our dovetail box. It also can be used as an alternative to our wooden mallet. We'll be using these to tap our chisels along. We use a rubber mallet or a wooden mallet so that we don't 
damage the end of our chisel. Now, if for some reason you can't get your hands on one of these, you can use a hammer. But with the precaution you're gonna to wanna to take when you're tapping your chisel is to use the side of the hammer and not the end. And as you, if you're using your hammer for assembly, you'll need to brace the piece with a small block of wood so that any denting that happens happens on that sacrificial block and not on your finished project. One of the other tools that we'll need for dovetailing that doesn't get the credit deserve, it deserves is a marking gauge. We'll use this to register the depth of our cuts, and it's, essential, it's an essential tool for cutting dovetails successfully. In order to mark our dovetails out properly, it's very helpful to have a dovetail saddle square. This one is made by Veritas, and we're, we'll be using the 14 degree dovetail saddle, saddle square. It's available in different ratios, and what I really like about it is that it's perfectly 14 degrees here and 90 degrees here, and that's essential for successful dovetail joints. Another tool that's optional, but I really recommend, is to use your block plane. We'll be using this to transfer our dovetail joints from one to the other. And the advantage that it gives us is that the side of the plane is exactly 90 degrees to the sole, and the reflective surface lets, makes it easier for us to register our dovetails. When you take a class here at Woodcraft, you'll be working on a professional Schoberg's workbench with a front and tail vise. It also features these removable and repositionable bench dogs so you can secure your work in a variety of ways. If you don't have room in your shop for a bench this big, Schoberg offers an alternative. The Smart Vice has a lot of the same features, including the bench dogs, that this larger bench has. But you can clamp it anywhere, from a small shop to your kitchen counter. And that's part of the beauty of working with hand tools is that you can, you can work in a variety of different spaces without making so much dust. Now there is another alternative for the home shop, the simple hand screw. We can use this to make our own vise. What we need to do is place the hand screw on the edge of our workbench and clamp it in place with an F-clamp. Make sure it's nice and tight and I want to align the side of the jaw with the side of the bench. This will allow me to clamp my work securely. One thing I do like to remind people is that the jaws of, of, our, wood, of our hand screw can open asymmetrically. They're not necessarily parallel. And what can happen is you can have your workpiece in there tight on one side, but the other side can slip. This can cause an unsafe situation. So when you adjust your, when you tighten your piece in your hand screw, make sure that the jaws are parallel so that you can work safely. So all of the tools that I've shown you today are listed in the description below. Once you have your tools gathered and your workspace clear, you'll be ready for the next video where I'll show you how to prepare the materials to make this traditional dovetail box out of stock purchased at your local home improvement store. So get, get things ready on your end and join me for the next video and we'll make some sawdust.